your PI probably wouldn't want to hire a person who doesn't feel as committed. It is also fair for you to start a job that is going to be financially and personally fulfilling towards your personal goals. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. A lot of people contemplated if they should be going on postdoc or if they should be looking for a job in the science industry after the PhD. So if you're one of these people, this video is made for you. And if you have a friend contemplating if postdoc is for them, make sure to share with them this video and that will inspire them the decision on what to do and what not to do. Everything you're seeing on this channel is a retrospective idea that I have from six years ago when I graduated my PhD. Since I started my PhD, it has been 10 years of full-time effort in academia. I have been postdoc for six years. I have done three different postdoc, one in Hong Kong, my local lab in my PhD research, one in South Carolina in America and France, the last one that I finished. This year was the moment I have started to realize that I have the curiosity to look for jobs outside of academic work. There is no right or wrong answer. I'm going to post a few questions that you should be asking yourself whether or not you should be choosing postdoc and we'll discuss that. Every career decision is a balanced calculated risk. Let's talk about what are the good reasons for someone to take a postdoc position. First of all, taking a postdoc has to start with the fact that you want to be a professor. But just wishfully wanting to be a professor isn't enough in this academic competition. So I'm going to post all of the consideration I would have when I started postdoc. First, you are aware that the chance of being a professor has a low success rate. That means you need to make sure you have enough currency. Meaning, when you are graduating PhD, at least having four publications. Academic currency is your publication. Personal currency, such as personal finance and scholarship that you can get for your postdoc. Family currency, which means your family is aware that you will be tunnel visioning on a science project for maybe four to six years, or maybe more when you get to professor job. And now this is more technical, but I think not all postdoc contracts are created equal. And being in postdoc for a while now, I see the value of making sure your contract has at least one and a half year, especially if you are traveling to a foreign country for postdoc. It's not hard and fast rule, but I would suggest to avoid any contract that is less than one and a half year to make productive use of your postdoc time. It is no surprise that after PhD, we are more prone to getting depression. If you're traveling to a new country, be aware that there is a lot of hurdle beside academic. And in this video, I have spoken about how you can build your peer support system intentionally. I would say there are bad reasons to start a postdoc. And this article has already talked about it. That will include feeling that you are not done when you finish PhD. Reality is science is never done. And when you finish your degree, you have to make a personal career decision to decide whether you want to stay or you want to move on. And there is no right or wrong answer. You feel like a postdoc was the only career path, which again is not true. All of your professor told you to take a postdoc. That's the risk of taking one-sided opinion against balanced sources from many people. And you think postdoc is the easiest job to get. But guess what? It's only going to get harder and harder if you stay in postdoc but don't want an academic job. So if you make up your mind, the best time to leave would be after PhD. 
I started off with my video about choosing PhD advisor and I have given you guys the brutal fact of how unlikely it is for one person to become a faculty member. And of course, everyone should start PhD with the mindset that you want to be a professor to begin with. Otherwise, there are a lot of other degrees that are more rewarding for one person to enter a science industry. There's no right or wrong answer and everyone has a different financial situation, different personal passion, and different problem they want to solve in lives. I recommend taking a look at your program, gather information from many sources in the alumni network. A postdoc is not an obvious next step if you don't want a professor job. I would argue if you want international experience, you do not need to postdoc because I have spoken to a few people and learned about their story right after PhD they can actually get a direct job even as an international worker in EU and in US. So you don't need to sign up for postdoc if you don't want to be faculty. In hindsight, I felt like I wish I have spoken to a lot more people. That's why I make this video for you because your PI probably wouldn't want to hire a person who doesn't feel as committed as become faculty. It is also fair for you to start a job that is going to be financially and personally fulfilling towards your personal goals. Again, this is all about fit. A PhD is like a stem cell. We really could differentiate into any role, any job types in the society, and it's not a trivial task to figure that out. So in this exercise, I hope you will think about what are the two to three skills that everyone can agree that you do the best. Is that a lab skill? Is it a writing? Is this speaking skills, research, coding, even interpersonal skills? I'm talking about not the skills that you got one out of five, two out of five. I'm talking about exceptional performance. Another question would be, does the result of that work matters deeply to you? To some people, it matters a lot to them if the name is on the paper, being acknowledged as an author. Some people want to feel being a part of a team. Is it curing a disease? Or is it the sparkle of the eyes from a happy client? The language of why could actually change to the purpose of why you are doing certain things. After you have identified your talent and purpose, the remaining task will be finding out how you can find a career path that uses the most of these talents. That's also called the mission, where you can use your talent and be at so-called your sweet spot. I was reading this book, What's Out There For Me? These two puzzle pieces was the analogy used in this book. Most of us spend energy identifying what are the jobs out there for me and what are the job description what does this job do? But if this book was really refreshing to read because in a way it was a self-exploratory time. So the question of the other side of the puzzle is yourself. Ask the question, what do I do best? I hope the talent exercise just now helps you to identify that. But I got the luck to get connected to Natalia. Natalia has a PhD in neuroscience her company, Welcome Solution, has an aptitude test to determine whether or not you are a risk taker, you are a good fit in the corporate world, in the startup world, in academia. Can you be a freelancer or entrepreneur? After I started working with Natalia, I was very curious about the potential of what I could be. I noticed I got quite a high score in my startup attitude test and corporate as well as entrepreneurship. And it's no surprise that I actually score poorly in academia and I probably shouldn't be a freelancer. And I know why, because I'm always a team player and I always value working with people and 
building a bigger project than myself. And I think these are the characteristics that will thrive in good corporate or startup world, but could be a detrimental aspect of being an independent academic or an independent freelancer. So Natalia didn't pay me for this, but I borrow her website material to show you what is the resource out there that you can consider. She actually run this career orientation course. You can learn about yourself. You can also learn about the rest of the job market. And of course, she wrote this aptitude test that I just show you. In the end, I'm still doing my homework. Um, I don't recommend this course if you are not in the later stage of your PhD and you don't care desperately about job options because you are going to have to work a lot. It's a course that you get to do a lot of work yourself. So I enjoyed it because I'm in that desperate situation and she put me through a lot of work. So if you are in that position, I think you may enjoy her service because she's going to push you, make you the best version of yourself. If you are curious about it, please check out her website. And for all my viewers, she has kindly offered a limited quota of a promotion. At checkout, she will give you an additional 10% discount with the promo code as in the description. And for those who are curious about Natalia's work and you don't have the budget, can't afford her one-on-one -on -one services, I highly recommend reading her book because that book is the foundation of her workshop. If you can purchase someone's live experience with $10, I think that is a bargain. So to me, instead of saying I am tired of academia, um, this is really not because I still think a lot of time I value every opportunity that I had. I do not regret any of the decision from doing the first postdoc in my local lab, the second postdoc in America and the third postdoc in France. I wouldn't have the inspiration to move on to other type of role beside professor. If I haven't been in the US and haven't seen the alumni graduating from Clemson and moving on to different exciting roles that are serving science and they have different way of living the professional lives. In Hong Kong, there is mostly academic job market and government job market. In the US as well as the EU, there are a lot of scientific role that needs to be filled and my experience is actually valued in those industry. So having several years of postdoc exposure, talking to different people, sharing the stories, it makes me curious to know what else are out there and how else I can serve the world and be more effective in influencing positive outcome of science. I believe life is like a journey. One way ticket to the location is usually perceived as a higher value. People pay more money for the direct flight. But a lot of time we find pleasure in taking a longer flight that is cheaper and you also get to see the change of sceneries. A lot of time your creativity only grow when you change country between work experience. One person could be a lot more creative if you have experience working outside of your home country. I certainly see ways of doing things, the way we are communicating are very different from one social setting to the others. So personally, I think all of this postdoc experience has made me a better human and a more knowledgeable worker in the future. Whichever company I'm going to join next, I'm confident all of this experience wouldn't go to waste. Your career choice is like the shoes that you pick. You shouldn't pick a pair of shoes just because someone else says it looks good on you, but it doesn't feel right. If you need to hike, then you probably shouldn't pick the high heels. To me, I think your life situation also change over different decades. The last decade, I was in my 20s, and my priority goes to maximizing my cultural experience, maximizing my scientific training. 
I have less priority given to my family, for example. This is a personal choice and everyone could tell you a different scenarios. And if you are honest and totally transparent about what you need and what you want in life after PhD, then you are more likely to choose the right track for yourself. And there's no right or wrong answer. There are people who are more financially stable with the family support and they don't worry about the job instability. But fast forward six more years since my PhD graduation, I'm a little older and maybe slightly wiser. I start to realize life is not just about the training, the science and how much impact. Part of how we live our life is about how much positivity you are creating to the others' lives. And at this point of my life, I really hope to refocus my energy, to put priority to my loved ones, my family. It still feel like a breakup, knowing that I don't want to pursue what I wanted 10 years ago. But I think acknowledging that your life situation changes and you need to take a full acceptance as a human and do not judge whatever you need. Knowing that if you nurture what you need, you're going to do better in that situation. So I hope this is a sharing that might inspire you to make the right choice for your future. And if you have questions, please write it in the comments. And I hope I cover most of the consideration one should consider before choosing a postdoc. So there it is, my reason of why I chose to be postdoc and why I think this is the best time to transform my knowledge and skills. And I'm still looking for jobs, so if you have suggestions and any stories that you want to share with me, please don't hesitate to reach out because I still read all of my messages and all of these questions you send, I will read them as well. I hope this sharing is helpful for you to reflect whether or not a postdoc is for you. If you think this video helps you, please make sure to hit the like button. That will help the algorithm to recognize this video and more people could see it. That sums up my video. I will see you the next time. Thank you for watching.